My Gavan and Melanie Eden, and well met indeed. I am Arakia Galadurathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. Welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as they are Ardunayim and our oppressive reign of uh, central Minhiriath, uh, which is where we currently are. Um, I should just say, obviously I recorded this one immediately after the last one, as I said I would, and I realise I didn't touch upon Lothlorien, and there's probably going to be a slew of comments on that last video saying, what about Lothlorien? What about Lothlorien? <laughs> and the answer to that question yes, is man. yes, Lothlorien will start soon Debate. also, and I am currently Glory. debating in my Honor. head whether to drop on. the Empire videos in favour of Lothlorien, because, and I'll tell you the reason for why, oh, your army really is awful, other than the general and one unit of cell souls, you you press ganged into service you bastard elves um, I'm enjoying the Empire campaign and it's fun to learn all this new stuff but I appreciate that um, and it it is a very mixed opinion um, campaign but equally if I were to do away with it then we'd be doing solely DAC content with Ardenine videos Lothlorien and then version 2 overviews um, which obviously is not ideal I don't want to be solely dividing conquer but then why do I not I mean it, Divide and Conquer has got me to the 27,000 subscribers I have now. Well, no, actually, that's a lie. That is a lie. I would say about 10,000 of you are here because of Dak, and the other 17 are here because of the law videos, which is why, <laughs> until I do another law video, the, the subscriber base sort of stills for a while. Anyway, we attack them, so we're going to have to go up here. Um, the Ardenheim campaign is not only really enjoyable for me, I'm absolutely loving playing this campaign. It's so different to everything else I've played, and it's such a fun nation to play as. Uh, I liked Umbar in Divide and Conquer anyway. In version 1.2, Umbar were one of my favourite nations. Um, and then to, the, to add these cool changes, I just like them even more. I'm gonna, I've started here because I'm going to try and at least claim this little hill here. Um, so I'm really enjoying Umbar, and so are all of you, so I'm more than happy to do two videos of it each week because the campaign's really gripping and thrilling. Um, I really, obviously, I want to do um, faction overviews. Faction overviews are the bread and butter of the channel, and um, I will redo every single one for version 2 because they are drastically different. Um, and the channel is based on Divide and Conquer. So then you've got two Arden Iron videos and the version 2 overviews, which will start soon. But then I, do, I really want to play as Lothlorien as well. I enjoy Lothlorien a lot. The campaign is good fun, in, in my opinion. Um, and we've made various changes. And of course, it will be a Total War version. Um, but I don't want to do five videos a week. I haven't the time. Especially right now with all this house moving, as I said in the last episode. Um, I'm moving house. I'm moving out, actually. I still, unfortunately, live with my parents. Because in England, and certainly outside of London, house prices are ridiculous. And we didn't want to rent because we feel like it's throwing money away. So I've, me and Jess have both lived with our respective parents, or parent in her case, um, for some time now. And um, we want to move out. So we're doing that. We're doing that right now. Uh, 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 as I said in the last one, our offer has been accepted. And um, then we'll move in and decorate and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a busy time period for me. So I don't want to do five videos. Um... And um, so I don't know what to do. Lothlorien will be viewed more, I'm sure, than the Empire videos currently are. And I do feel the Empire videos. I mean, I've I've now re I've now re-recorded one, and completely done away with one because I was not pleased with my delivery. And I I I really enjoy playing the game, but I wonder if I'm no longer enjoying recording it as much and perhaps I should. Well, let me, well asking you would all be biased because the chances are the people here are the people that don't watch the Empire video. That's a problem with 27,000 subscribers and an average view range around 4,000 views per video. Um, obviously that's so 27,000 of, of you are subscribed and about 4,000 of you regularly watch DAC videos but then the people that watch the Empire video could be completely different to the people that watch the DAC videos. So if I were to ask all of you, oh, do you think I should swap the Empire videos for Lothlorien? Of course, you're going to say yes, because you, you have an, a DAC interest. But I think that is likely what I will do. So there will probably be two Arden Iron videos, one Lothlorien, and then the version 2 faction overviews. Um, whenever they can start. Right, we've got archers, they haven't got archers. Because those cell swords are going to be a real pain in the ass, and that's what we're going to try and drop. Uh, 
they're taking the bait. They're taking it. It's not bait. We haven't got anyone hidden. Right, move up, move up, move up, move up, move up. Gimazor, you're coming down here to flank. Take the 44 of them with you. You're coming up here to flank. Take the 155 of them with you. Archers, you are just firing at those cell swords whilst you can. There's the new look for the Phallas Lords. Very professional indeed. Who are they leaving behind? Oh, they've got archers this time. Oh, not very many though, so that's all right. We will take losses though. Elves are so good. They're the most accurate archers in the game and they have the highest damage for their arrows in the game. Per level. Obviously, an elite human archer is better than a militia archer, but um, a militia archer is still a force to be reckoned with. Right, I think that's enough pullback. Catch them. Involved. Get involved. The battle is very much in our favour. Get you guys involved there. Ours. Archers. I don't need to do the sneaky, sneaky archer thing here. We need Gimbalzor on the Phallus, really, actually. He's, he's such a good fighter. They're so aggressive. Cells was surrounded, eh? The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. I'm going to use our archers to just saturate their archers. All right, so we killed the cell swords. Minimal losses. Excellent work, men. Right, we'll go to time six. I'm not bothered about the phallus lords. Phallus Lords are incredible, but they suffer the, the one thing that all elves suffer, stun locking. Then this is why whenever people ask, and it's such a common theme, when people make sub mods, they always feel that the elves aren't represented as the elite warriors that they should be. And they a common sub mod that you'll find all throughout any Lord of the Rings themed um, works is always a sub mod whereby the elves are made incredibly powerful, but really low in numbers. And on paper, this would work wonderfully, but in actuality, it is awful because the game features stun animations. So when a unit takes damage, it has an animation that shows them either deflecting a blow or actually just taking the hit and like bowing over. And so as if like to hold their wounded stomach and then recovering. And unfortunately, when one unit is surrounded by eight units who are all attacking it, it is just forever being stunned until eventually it dies. It never gets an opportunity to this attack is a back. Clear victory. 75. Ah, oh, deny him, armsman, you beasts. Um, it never gets an opportunity to attack back. And so it means that no matter, it could have a hundred attack stat. And it could then be killed by a militia with one attack stat because it's one man versus a hundred. And unfortunately, that's just the way the game works. So, like, for their example, the Phallus Lords are an incredibly good bodyguard unit, one of the best. But because they can be stun locked, they suffer. And um, so just surrounding them with with forces is the way to do it. So even so, when you're trying to fight against the elves on a grand perspective, right down to the actual microing on the battlefield, the number one tactic is to outnumber them. There is no other guaranteed way to beat elves. Your orders, my lord. Right now, I'm really genuinely considering using this army to push for Basra Doom. The money we'd get from there would be brilliant and it would shut down Linden's capabilities even further. And I am gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna bloody well go for it. When the time is right as well, I feel like the time is looking like it might be right, because Ernie has disappeared. I have Angmark and Oppress. Because I can easily go out and kill these and then take Mitchell Delving from them. But then we might stretch ourselves too thin and put Gimmelcad and Gimmelcon right out there in the mix. But first things yes, first, we're going to take Tharbad. We shall engage. We're just going to use our generals here so that we get the replenishment back. We're now at the stage where we don't want units to be killed Muster off. We actively men. want units to we survive. 
Ah, oh, there's the elves awakening and discovering the stars for the first time. Something that then causes them to um, forever love the stars. It's the first light that they ever see. At the time that the elves awake, the world is not lit by sun nor moon. It is not lit at all. And uh, so Varda fills the skies with starlight for their benefit so that they can at least see. And so as they're laying on the ground, they have never felt life before. They open their eyes and staring down from the heavens above them is an, is an untouched wilderness of starlight. What are we doing here? We're attacking against one unit and we're only sending in the generals. Now the actual bridge we use is that one over there. So I have no... Oh, hold on. Hold on. Dunland's bodyguard is armor piercing now, isn't it? Oh. Send in the Corsairs as well. Oh. The Raiders. We won't use the Halberdiers. You'll just die. It is unfortunate that this bridge can't actually be used, because obviously it's perfect. Um, but it just doesn't work. And only this one does. In we go. And there's the Raiders. Following up behind. I'm wary. I am so wary. <laughs> I, if Dunland send their full military might back to Tharbad, they could very well break through into our realm and ransack and flee towards us. And then basically all we've done is help defeat both us and Enidwyth, which would be a pain. But we've just got to hope that, that Enidwyth keep up the pressure long enough. Because if we can take Dunland really out of the equation, I think Enidwyth could stalemate with Isengard. Of course, Rohan have been destroyed, remember everyone. There is no Rohan. And Gondor and Isengard aren't at war yet. And I don't know if they will be. But um, Isengard have no enemies other than Ened Wyeth, which is why they'll almost certainly die. We probably should have stayed out of it altogether, to be honest, and then chanced our arm that neither Dunnan nor Isengard would attack us. Right. Generals. You go wider. The raiders will get annihilated. But the hope is to get the raiders to soak them up, cause them to get a little fatigued, and then we'll send our bodyguards in around the back. Also, if they're not going to move, you might be able to kill the general off quite easily. Because the general's on that side that we've just arrived at. And they're not manoeuvring down to really support very well. They didn't like being flanked. I'm going to like it even less when we do it again in a second. I'll keep it at time six because it's just the a straightforward very fight. Much in our favor. Victory will be out. Chieftain's bodyguard are very good though. And if one of them does get to our general... Only half the enemy force remains. Oyson's still going, but he's totally cut off. This is just one of those Our fights where you're just praying your city. general doesn't get too ballsy. Because he can easily get wiped out. Right, so we've won. 10% losses, all from the Raiders, really. Pull the raiders out. He's only—he's just killing you. Whereas he won't kill the uh, narrow and arrow. Oh, and there we go. The victory. We have won Solid victory, men. Well done. Thirty-two kills is the top from both. Oh, well done. The raiders did really well. <laughs> that was way too sincere for a game. Talking about them like they're my children. Oh, well done, Azrazaya Raiders. Well done. That is, of course, the Assault of Orthanc by the Ents. Tell you what's incorrect about that image is that over on the right hand side of the base of the tower, it looks like there are bits of um, the rock being flaked away, and that's um, that didn't happen. The tower was famously basically immortal to damage or Im impenetrable 
Uh, invulnerable. Invulnerable, that's the word. And, and Treebeard actually has to actively stop some Ents from hurling themselves at it because they're doing themselves damage. Um, and the tower just doesn't take any damage whatsoever. Such is the superiority of Numenorean ar architecture and um, some sort of magic, I assume, imbued upon the tower. Right, Dunn and not very happy with us, understandably. We can't do out here. But we do get two free upkeep straight away, thanks to the moot tool of the uh, Dunn Lendings. And they've already got a port, which is nice. So now we've got a Wild Men port on the southern side, and a lovely Ardenaim, or Middle Eastern really, or Men of the East, sorry, port on the other side. Right, now the real problem here though is, are we going to be able to hold off Captain Bob? No, we're not. He's got Dunedain Wardens. Um, but Kalatar is a really wealthy region. Oh, it's going to have another unit by the time they arrive. Yes, Car Kalatar, you beautiful bastards. So will Matrith, which means Larry won't be an issue. You. Do we go for it? Do we go for it? I don't want to cheat and toggle fog a wall, because that's just literally cheating. <laughs> but I'd love to see if Angmar are pressing against Bree, because if they are, then that's a perfect opportunity to strike. What am I doing in our Menelos? Trying to get troops that was free upkeep, aren't we? We shouldn't be worrying about that at the moment. With the money that we've got, we want to try and make actual money. Oh, no, we don't really. We need troops, yeah. Um, archers, please. And I will take some savages if you can get some of those in in the next round. Tharbad yes, is going to be key. This tower will keep vigil over the lands. With honour. This tower will keep vigil over the lands. This tower will keep vigil over the lands. Who is in there? One unit of something. Orders. Your will Beginning the siege. The siege what is it? Yeah, oh, some huntsmen. Well, because then I can... Oh, that is, earns 1,230. Oh, Tharbad, you're a wealthy little jewel now, aren't you? So yeah, that's the... Obviously, taking Tharbad was very risky because Tharbad is a poor ruined town and province but start to build it up and it's the, it's the biggest town Let's in the game at game start oh this is just where i'm stuck do we press out for mitchell delving and just leave a a, a, a nothing sort of army here i'll move to merge those together um i think we probably should really i think we should apply as much pressure as we can and if we at least we can't take it we can sack it i'm gonna do it 16 of you hold sackville he says, try to hold something. Reginard is in here where he the fled earlier. They've got a catapult, Shire Militia and Merchant Militia. They're not going anywhere. Also, I saw a comment a couple of videos ago of someone saying you should be able to, um, uh, to uh, raise Shire forces in the Shire. You should be able to get hobbits from the conscription camp. And my answer to you, sir, is you can already. They're there. I've already shown this screen off. Um, the Hobbitry in Arms. I didn't want to go mad with it and suggest you could get every Hobbit unit, but I added a Hobbit unit. We must make a stand. Right, they attacked Karkalatar, but we have two units. And a general. And the city itself. I don't think it's going to matter. We're in such we a Ah, Bree, perfect. I was hoping you might do that. I didn't want to have to do a long siege. Now, we have Gimelkad in this army, and he is an absolute demon. He is a veritable slayer of men and beast. Um, which is why I'm not concerned that we're going to lose in any way. The only threat really is the catapult. Show and it's going to no certainly mercy. target Gimelthon. And all we need is one stray lucky catapult bolt and we've, we're scuppered. So what I might try and do is the very cheesy tactic of, of build, putting my army right at the corner of the map. We're being attacked from the front but the reinforcements are coming in from over here. And I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, everyone. I know it's cheesy as hell, but I'm going to do it. We're just going to rush them. Is that everyone? No. The enemy have brought up more men. I'm going to pause it too. Right. Um, Saraline Mercs, go up there. Take the halberdiers with you. I'm so sorry, everyone. I really am. This is the cheesiest tactic the game has. You guys support. 
And you and you turn to face, because we will need your archers. And you come sort of here and flank down when they run in. It's the catapult I'm most concerned with. I know that's, that's foolish, really, but it is. I need that catapult dead. And Reginard with his cell swords, but he doesn't have enough to really worry us. This is the cheesiest I've ever done. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. No, you can't attack them until they're fully in. Ah, yeah, and um, you can catch them. Which I didn't realise. And they just walk through you without fighting back. So that's the merchant militia dealt with. <laughs> Whoops. Catapults have been shut down straight away. And, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I feel shame. I feel a real level of shame in this fight. The cavalry has been killed immediately with perfectly favourable odds on our side. If we I'm not bothered like about this, the army that actually attacked us. Enemy. As long as Gimelcat survives, we'll be alright. Although it should be noted that Gimmickard is he's good, but um, he is going to be struggling somewhat against those cell swords. But then the merchant militia are getting shot in the back now, and they won't like that, much, not one bit. The Marines too. All right, you guys are done. You could move into a position to prepare for the Shire militia. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. Yeah, so Gimmickad just really has to worry about the cell swords. Merchant militia are going down, courtesy of the arrows in the back. Shire militia have been beaten. Although, it's, this is a real test for Gimmickad. I tell you what, actually, pull like to there ish. So our archers can possibly support. I'm tempted to charge the archers in, but I think the fire they're doing at the moment is probably more useful. Yeah, we're going in now. around them. Don't let the prey get away. Cell swords. Reginard's in there somewhere. He survived us once already. There he is. Come on, someone get him. Someone get him. Don't let him run. Ah, the enemy is here. Oh, why have you run like utter fools? Our men have Behold how our yes! Foe Reginard is dead! The attack. Well done, everyone. We did it. We cheated, but we did it. <laughs> like I really care. No, I do. I shouldn't have to cheese it, but sometimes. 187. 119.
I've used... I've used features of the game that shouldn't be used against it. Now, I'm certain that this video will be um, comparatively disliked way more than most. Um, and that particular battle will be highlighted as folly on my part. People won't care that I am generally just a laid-back guy and I don't really care. If I cheat, I cheat. If I don't, I don't. I'm not bothered. Um, and there will be people who will write comments vehemently supporting their idea that that was just Victory! utterly ridiculous. Such is the fate oh, of sack it. 4,000 gold. 2,000 gold from war. Mitchell Delving. Christ alive, is it a wealthy province. Oh, the Shire is just an absolute godsend. Oh, and we just got 4,000 from taking it alone. Now, Mitchell Devon cannot upgrade beyond a town. So, Hobbiton, Sackville, Deep Hallow will all remain villages. Mitchell Delvin will remain a town. Um, but because the mere fact it is a town, it gets about double the income of the others. It's so wealthy. Now, we just have to be careful that that didn't just take Bree down to below. Oh, that was our mission. Oh, we've got Civil Disorder. What? The Dwarves of khazad who have been beaten out of, Mo of Moria, are attacking Enid Why? Yes, my lord. What is going on here? I'm so tempted to get a conscription camp, but we don't get oh, this version of the game. I can't train anything from the conscription camp until I have 25% King's Men culture. <laughs> Bregos still couldn't build a mine, even with all that money we just gained. Do we plummet into troops? This place doesn't like us at all. It'll be ages before we can train anything here. Oh, Mitrith was attacked. That's interesting. Your orders, my lord. Royal Tharbad can now recruit. Oh, you can get a full army. Yeah, we're going to go with troops. Yes, my lord. We definitely need the Tharbad side to be reinforced. Um, you can get another set of garrison troops and send those east. Command. We're going to have to fight at Matrith. We're not going to let them siege us out. Oh, no. We've called Ernie over. He was just hiding in the trees. Um, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, you could probably Lord, beat Ernie. Oh, that's a thought. I need you to get out, though, guys. Moving to crush the enemy. Victory! Yeah, run away. How far can only go? You can go over there. So we're going that way. I've tried. Yes, my lord. Join yes. together. Right, Mitchell Delving. Let's do it. Oh, that's the office of the mayor, isn't it? We can't destroy that. Destroy everything else. <laughs> Suck it, free. This place will be of no use to man nor beast for years to come. Unless they like walking on roads and eating food. Same thing is going to happen here. Burn to the ground. Raise the attack rate, tax rates. Get at least one turn of very high tax out of them. And that should have just seen us. Oh, that's just seen us gain so much money. <laughs> I feel bad almost. Right, so yes, we will get Homenolos into building something. Um, likewise, I think if we could get a meeting hall here, it might make us they make them like us a little more. Tharbad, are you even building anything? No, you're not. What should we choose? We could get land clearance on both sides. Oh, or I could get a better barracks. And we'll get Naja Tarek units out. Oh, yeah, look, we've got a huge culture. Yes. We'll do that. Barracks on that side. Farming on that side. You might as well be normal tax rank. Um, I'm going to just toggle the fog of war. Because I want to see why Kazadum has just gotten involved. Oh, good God. Not that many, but they're there. Oh, and Isengard and Enderdwyth aren't... Ah, uh, Isengard are taking up Enderdwyth's time, though. I mean, I'm cheating now and looking at Dunland, but they really are right up against it, aren't they? If we can build an army in Tharbad, we could probably take Dunlarak with ease. Um, but then where are Khazad-dum going to go? That's the thing. You 
wish to parley, Sendinette. Why have they chosen to come here? <laughs> oh, so let's cheat and have a look. Oh, Bardi Donyanak has fallen to the dwarves. Angmar can't put pressure on Bree because the dwarves are there. And they are also still fighting the northern Dunedain. Bree has what we can see. We're not really cheating by looking at Bree. Ernie and Deep Hollow are, their, are basically their entire armies, which is why they're so hoping for Kar Kalatar. Angmar not putting on any pressure anymore, though. Fenestrian in a tier 2 and a quite large. Imladris appear to be coming towards me. Not sure I'm happy about that. Misty Mountains, Crime and Netleys, you're doing well. Anduin down to Bjorn's Halls and Framsburg alone still. Mirkwood's vast swaths of land in the centre there. Mordor very much being held by Gondor. Um, and, and, and Dol Amroth just stagnating, really. So it all depends on whether Enidwyth can hold... And there is Linden. Oh, I'm cheating, but there is no one between us and Buzzardum. Oh, shit balls. Pardon my. I've sworn. <laughs> Erumelion. Erumolion, sorry. Molien is coming for us, and look at that army. Bugger. Bugger, 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 bugger. We just made a load of money out of Sack, I'm thinking that. Anyway, took the fuck of war again. Right, Larry the Kind, the what have you got? Oh, you've got battle. nothing, mate. Why are you attacking me? You this is going to be a pitifully easy battle, and it'll be the battle to end today's episode. Attack. Uh, liberal amounts of cheating with Toggle Fog of War. I mean, it's not going to change how I play, though. I mean, Eru Molian's large army coming from Linden it would be coming whether I attack Buzzardum or not. So doesn't change much really. Now they will just run away, they always do. The question becomes one of can we catch them? Oh yeah, the Breland Bodyguard sprite has been fixed by the way, it's no longer a black box. It's fixed some time ago. Uh, well actually just last week and I only implemented the proper fix for it yesterday. <laughs> I say yesterday, I'm recording this on Sunday, by the way. You're watching it probably on Wednesday. Oh, are you actually running away? No, you're running to the edge. I've also just remembered, Breland bodyguards are armor-piercing mace-wielding bastards who will be able to massacre me. I don't think this is going to be as clear-cut as I thought. And they're going to be shooting us as we get closer to them. Come down from the hill. We'll walk towards them for now. If we don't kill them all in the time limit, it becomes a draw. The Breland bodyguards are much better than they used to be. Oh, I also note that some of them are actually holding no weapons. And just realised that. I wonder if that's present in the main version we now all use. The main build. I'll have to look into that. Alright, come down the hill. Oh, the wooden hunters are going to run away, actually, aren't they? They won't suffer us to attack. There we are. Flank. Oh. oh dear. They've cut us off. They've done exactly what they wanted to do. All I can do is leave it at time six and hope then. Victory will be ours. I don't think victory will be ours. Oh bugger me. Get right in amongst them. Do not let him die. I'm not bothered about the Woodland Hunters, they're pathetic. Only half the enemy force remains. We've lost half of our men. I know we have. Shut up. Our men have slain the enemy general. Yes! Without him, our men have fought long and are becoming tired. They're Woodland Hunters, right? Yes. Look at them. This is what a solid unit can do. They're carving out their own defensive line. Even though they're totally surrounded. Ah, but we've broken through the middle. Go on! I can't remember your name, but you've earned some applaud with me now. <laughs> 
We will win. God, Larry the Khan, Balakan. <laughs> Balakan, you beauty. They made a circle around our bed and he just walked into the middle and thought, Yep, I'll have you, and I'll have you, and I'll have you. And he's killed them all. We shall rename Matrith in his honour, Kar Balakan. Because I don't know any other Ardenaic words. Uh, someone the other day told me that um, because of the poor way I'm pronouncing Ardenaim, a lot of you think that it's spelled A-R-D, but it isn't. It's just pronounced as if it's A-R, like father. The word father. And i tell you why this is funny. It's because I say bath, right? I'm going to have a bath. And people in the north of England say bath. And whenever we get into these little debates of how the southerners say it properly and the northerners say it wrong, the argument the northerners always make in the, uh, certainly every single time I've ever had this discussion with a northerner is that there isn't an R in the word, so why would you say bath? And that is the same quote I would say to the person who told me I'm pronouncing R and I am wrong and people are thinking there's an R in it. It's pronounced as if there is an R in it, but there isn't. Um, and another a point, a point that I use to replicate, to inform this point rather, or Your order, something of note, is when Gandalf is fighting off against the Balrog, in the film, granted, but he uses the right words, which is why it's relevant. He stands upon the bridge and he says, I am the, I believe, wielder of the secret fire? No, um, something of the secret fire, and then he says, wielder of the flame of Arnor. And what he's actually saying is A-N-O-R. And it's the name, it's the Sindarin name for the sun. Now, that's what Arnor means. But it's pronounced incredibly similar to Arnor, which is the northern realm of the United Kingdom of Arnor and Gondor. And of course means King's Land, um, which actually has an R in it. But note that they are pronounced almost identically because of the way that Ardenaim and many Sindarin words are pronounced. So it is correct to say Ardenaim, um, and if people think it's spelt with an R, then it's on them to educate themselves and not on me to pronounce it incorrectly just so they know that there's not an R there. So I thought it was quite entertaining. Um, and it was good night. It was interesting to reflect that, obviously, as I say, in, in England, um, people say bath, people say bath. And um, the argument they always say is that there's not an R in the word, so why would they say bath? Why would they I not say bath? Uh, anywho, um, Kar Balakan, what's your actual name, Balakan? Can I remember what the circumflex is? Let's have a look. K A R. Bala. 150? No. Uh, 131? Yes! It's in there somewhere. You've just got to find it. Kar Balakan. Also, the circumflex, this was the second point the gentleman noted. It's another little lesson in, in, in speech for you for um, the languages of the Ardenaim. A circumflex, or really any accent in Sindarin or Ardenaic, does not denote stress, it denotes length. Um, this is most present in, for example, the Sindarin word for me is nin. N-I-N. Nin. And the Sindarin word for my is N-I with an accent N, which is nin. There's an absolutely minimal difference between them. Nin and nin. They sound almost identical, but the second is slightly longer in the pronunciation, creating the my rather than the me of the word. Um, and it's the same here. So even though Ardenaim has obviously the circumflex over the U and the A, it doesn't denote that you should put more emphasis on the U in the middle. It just means that it is pronounced longer, Ardunaim, rather than Ardunaim. Ardunaim, Ardenaim. There's slight differences to them. And stress and length are different. I'm not good enough with language to actually probably make it sound as it should sound. And I would just stress that. I'm not a linguist. I've not studied it yes, at all. I just fine. know of the rules and I know a basic understanding of what they mean behind the scenes. I'm going to let Kar Kaladzar be sieged out, by the way. Um, oh, and there he goes straight away. Captain Bob. All right, we'll fight it. We're going to lose. I mean, I'm just going to put that out there. Those Dunedine are going to be a real threat to us. Other than that, though, the army's actually pretty weak. The catapults will do some damage against the walls, but then they're going to be useless. We'll give it a whirl. This episode will be slightly longer, therefore, but... We attack! Why ever not? I'm going to go for a run after this, you might be interested to know. It's a lovely sunny day here in uh, Hertfordshire. The Queen's own county. It's not, she wasn't born here. The upper hand in this um, but it is an absolutely beautiful day out there, and it's probably got a nice crisp chill to it. Maybe minus four or, uh, not minus, maybe uh, three or four degrees. So it's nice and brisk. A, a crisp chill, I, I like to describe it as. 
Um, but it's gloriously sunny today. Ah, oh, the flag! The flag needs to change still. That's another one. Um, I've got some time before version 2. I'll try and do that this week, actually. Right. Uh, sorry, I'm nattering on and completely getting... I'm stuttering now. <laughs> I'm losing the ability to speak words. They're going to obviously smash through. Um, and we want to ensure that we minimalize casualties from the catapult. They won't bother with their other siege equipment. They will just break through the wall in various places. Oh, come on. Just stand somewhere else. I don't want anybody dying to stray catapult bolts. Is it because you're in shield pike wall? I bet it is. There you go. That'll have to do. There we are. Right, start the battle. Right. Come on then, come at me with your catapult. Any danger? There we go. Where are you going to go? Straight for the wall. The walls have fallen. Good God, that was quick. That was way too quick for my liking. They will wait though. What? You can't get through that gap there, even though there's a road there. No, you can't. Oh dear, didn't realise that. Well, I, I massively just fallen. hindered myself, but fortunately we're going to be able to get to the square before anything bad really happens. They're coming. The enemy have the walls. Look to our defense or all will be lost. You guys are holding up. What has just happened? Good God. Get out of there. Are they going to try and flank us? Oh, no, they're just going to stand there. Are they actually trying to hit me with their cat? God, they are, aren't they? Oh, wow. I've not known the AI to actually try to do that with catapults before. I think your formation might actually be putting you at a massive hindrance. And even though it looks like there's all this space here, unfortunately it's actually not. This is a building. And... Although whatever the catapults are doing, they're not doing it very well. They've yet to land a single shot. Oh, I've just totally tempted fate there, though, haven't I? Oh, you can go and shield wall. Do that then. There you go, yeah, go across there like that. The Dunadine have arrived first. No, no. Dunadine, give me a chance. And they're still going with their catapults. Go on, go on, go on. Friendly fire it, you sons of bitches. Please, please, yes! Oh, you morons. Something changes in the course of battle, for defeat seems almost certain. I know. Defeat is certain, mate. If Kalatar can pull something out of the bag, then maybe. Also, if the catapults keep killing their own, then we've got a real chance. Now, I've put Kal Kalatar there, because if they are actually aiming for him, there's a chance they might hit their own Dunedain. Ah, the cast are manoeuvring. They're still firing though. Alright, here we go. This is the one we're going to have to actually endure. Oh no, they've changed targets. That's all. Get involved, actually. You're our best unit. Whilst you're fresh, let's get you up against them. Could do some flanking actually. Let's hope their merchant cavalry tries to flank. Obviously, these two units are the only real threat. Once these guys are dead, we have a we have a real chance. The footmen are nothing to scoff at, and um, the, the the next biggest threat is those bloody farmhouse pikemen. They seem so 
like they'd be no threat at all, but they are actually quite a... We can flank them. They've, they've left themselves completely open to being flanked. We will. It looks like the catapults are pretty much done. Move around, give them something to think about. Come from both angles. Get right in there. Mix it up. Oh, they. Have you killed the Dunedain? Oh, no, the Dunedain ran away. Go on, lads! Kalatar, lead from the front, man! You are. Do as you're told, then. In we go, boys. In we go. Oh, yeah, send the cavalry against the spearmen, you bloody morons. This is for the south, men. This is for ancient Numenor and Arpharazon. You are having a really bad day over there, though. This, this Dunedain still. If those Dunedain actually started using their brains. Can I ask why we're having a, a hard time just pressing into them? How are we doing over here, Footman? Our army thing, has some good tidings. The enemy general, <gasps> the enemy general has just died. Who was the enemy general? Captain Bob, of course. But who actually was the general? I don't know. But that looks like routing to me. Greenway men at arms are having a none of it. Archer militia are off. Kalatar's still got 26 men. But the Dunedain have moved over to the other side. There's still 99 of them. Shire Militia are better than I've been giving them credit for as well. Is... And those footmen won't last long against the Dunedain. Only half our force remains. The feat seems almost certain. No, come on, come on, come on. We've just got to get the Shire Militia down. Come on. Only half the Blow the horn. Force remains. Run away, hobbits, run away. Hobbitry and arms are broken, but they're not actually routing. There we go, they're off. Shire militia are wavering. Dunedain have arrived back. No, and the Dunedain will be fresh now. And the footman can't get through the pikemen. No, I think we are going to lose. Pray something changes in the course of battle, for defeat seems almost certain. We can't beat those wardens. That's going to be what turns it. And unfortunately, in a f solid line like that, the pikemen have got the drop on us now. Yeah, it's over. It's over. All because of one unit of Dunedain Wardens, really. Kalatar! I'm saying his name wrong. I know that as well. That's what I mean. Like... I know the rules and I know how it should be done, but at the end of the day, everybody say it how you want to say it. I'm not going to chastise you. I'm long since beyond those days. And if people do, then let them. I mean, they're not doing anyone any favours. They're not assisting, they're not being friendly, they're just being smart Alex. Alex. Smart Alex. Unless you're saying something completely wrong, like utterly an completely moronic um, then of course it's nice if someone steps in but um, just slight mispronunciation of letters I don't think should ever be uh, attacked or, or jumped upon I wonder how this would have gone if I had just lined all three up here Pray something and just had them all on top of each other and just mm, asked the enemy to walk at us I think they still would have got the win and I mean a stray catapult bolt would have catapult boulder would have ruined everything <laughs> 64 Dunedain Wardens left though. I mean, we did cut their number down. But again, pikemen, even crappy ones like Farman, use them in the right situation and they are beasts. Our enemies have snatched victory from us like thieves in the night. 552. 376 from Kalatar. Well done. Well done. A sad day indeed, though. Um, how are we going to get that city back? That's the question. We're training troops at the moment, though, actually, aren't we? 
Yeah. We're training quite a large army. We could nip up and take it back, crush Captain Bob's little insurrection, and then return to Tharbad. I think we'll have to do that. We can't let Bree get any momentum, really. Ernie, the fastest milkman in the West, we need to worry and deal with him. And the provinces of the Shire have rebelled against us, as you can see. Or oh, Mitchell Delving hasn't, actually, but Sackville's gone. We'll take Kalatar back. We won't let this. What do you want? You've attacked our semi-allies. Oh, you're trying to bribe me. Of course you are. You're probably sitting on a mountain of gold with that tiny little army you've got. That no one can use but you. Your your gold carts are probably larger than your army at this point. I know what they're like. Dunland, probably asking for a ceasefire. Let us try yes, there it is. and not war for a change. No. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I will accept a ceasefire with you if you give me a region. Never. We you hope for a no. fruitful parlay. In oh, the and they're coming. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, they are on their way. <laughs> There is too much butter on those trays. <laughs> no, 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 senor. Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> right, uh, so we lost Sackville. Mitchell Delving. An order. Forming up orders. We have a bloody Lord. massive army that, with any luck, will smash Ernie to the kingdom we come. Slaughter them, my Lord. Let us His settle milk cart's not going to help him anymore. Back. He's going down. My Lord, my Lord. As you wish. Pull out. My lord. By your command. Yes, lift the siege. Yes, my lord. Yes. <sighs> but the other side is the one that's training. Ah, and they're a turn away. Um... Kalimetar. It wasn't even Kalatar. Who's Kalatar then? Oh, it's you, isn't it? Oh, of course. Kalimetar was a nobody. Oh, well, he fought bloody well. Well done, Kalimetar. I don't want to call everywhere car something. Oh, and we're not worried. We're now, now that we're moving for delving, we're not f focusing on Lind. Oh, this campaign is on the edge of a knife. I should get that mine up. Oh, 120. Uh, of course, this is the version as well where mines have very little money. Um, Your orders. I'm going. I'm going. I don't know. I was going to ally with Ennard Wyeth and give them the ability to walk through my land. But I don't think that will help them really in the long run. They're, they're concerned with Isengard enough. They're not bothered about the fact that I border them. Be gone. But that army that's coming at us from yes, Dunland, my lord. let's not beat around the bones here. If that army cannot take Tharbad, we have broken Dunland here. They'll siege it though, they will siege it. And the troops are a turn away. Oh, I'm going to end the episode here anyway. But uh, so there we are. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navar and Aden Peramad Malunin. And farewell. <laughs>